Welcome to another edition of MCAT Strategy. Today we will talk about considerations and advice when you are approaching the big day. Hopefully as you get close to your MCAT exam date, you have finished most of your studying and you are in the phase of studying where you are mostly doing practice tests. When doing practice tests, it is important to simulate the type of environment that you will be working in on the actual test date. Some people recommend practicing in a uh, quiet coffee shop like Starbucks, but I find that there is more talking in a Starbucks than you will find in an actual testing environment. The best simulation is a computer lab. If there are people in the computer lab, then you get the simulation of typing because some people complain that they have problems focusing through other people's typing and practicing in a computer lab will help you to try and address that problem. If you are pressed for time then perhaps you may not have time to do as many practice tests as you would like. So the general recommendation is to do the later AMC uh, practice tests because the newer AAMC practice MCATs are closer to what you will experience than the older tests. As you approach your test state, make sure you tidy up areas of weakness. There is a tendency for some people to work on their strengths, but if you are if you are already strong in a particular area, then just leave that and focus on your weaker areas. You might not enjoy that area of study, but forcing yourself to do it and addressing your weaknesses will do more to improve your score than polishing your strengths. If you are well prepared and have uh, prepared ahead of time, then closer to the exam date, there is a recommendation to taper off your studying and to focus on the more important topics if you are going to actually review. This way you have more energy to write on the actual date than if you studied hard all the way through. However, that's an ideal that many people do not achieve. And if you're in a position where you still have material to go, then the first thing to remember is not to panic. There is a gunshot reaction to panic because the MCAT is so important, but panic won't do any good, and it's just a waste of energy, so you must keep calm and keep studying. And if you are pressed for time, make sure you address those topics that you are weak with and that you have trouble with. There may be a temptation to uh, cancel your exam if you feel you're not ready, but I encourage you not to do so because on the actual day of the exam, you will have a opportunity to void. And voiding the MCAT means that it will not be marked and it, there will be no formal record of it, so you need not be afraid of voiding your exam. So even if you are really unprepared, and you want to cancel, I encourage you to just go ahead and write it. And if things go well, then you may not have to void your exam. But worst case scenario, if you do void it, at least you have experience writing the actual MCAT exam. And you have that experience going into the next write. Before you write your MCAT exam, make sure you read the MCAT Essentials PDF that is available on the AAMC website. It will explain the test day procedures, check-in, and include many things that you will need to know. Many people neglect reading this important document, so I encourage you to actually take the time to read it and highlight things of importance. Planning for the actual big test day is very important. Planning will help to reduce the anxiety that you have about writing the exam and any reduction in anxiety for the MCAT is going to improve your performance. Keep in mind that morning test writes often require more planning than the ones in the afternoon just because of how early it takes place. And during your planning process, make sure you keep a list of things to pack for the day of the actual test write. 
This list will help you keep everything organized and help to reduce the chaos as you prepare for writing the actual test. Transportation is going to be an important part of planning your test date. Uh, some questions to consider are, are you familiar with the area where your test center is? Lots of people write in other cities, and if you're not familiar with the area, then that is definitely something to take into consideration when you are planning your transportation. And if you have time before the actual test date, go beforehand to scout out the testing center ahead of time, and that will help uh, limit any surprises because some test centers are located in buildings that are difficult to locate. When deciding on how you are going to get there, pick the one that is most comfortable to you and that will reduce your anxiety the most. If you drive yourself, then that's no problem, and if you can get a ride, that's also good. Um, if you have to take public transporta transportation, then you will need extra planning. You will have to plan out schedules and bus routes and if you have to do any walking. And you will also need to plan so that you get there early in case there are any delays in the public transportation. Make sure you know how long it will take you to get there and leave extra time in case anything happens. There may be uh, traffic or construction and the last thing you want to do is be late for your MCAT exam. Remember that you have to be at the testing center early so you can go through the check-in procedures. One tip uh, when it comes to planning transportation is to print out maps online from MapQuest or Google Maps and add them to your list of things to pack the night before the MCAT exam. Timing is important even before you enter the exam. You need to decide on what time do you have to go to sleep, what time do you have to wake up, how long will it take you to eat and get ready, how long will it take you to get to the test center, and make sure you always, always leave extra time for getting to the test center, just in case. The answer to all of these questions should be written down when you are planning, and you should make a plan. After you have planned out your timing when it comes to your sleeping and when you're going to wake up, practice the routine that you have planned out the week before the exam every single day. Sleep and wake up at the same time. Do the same routine for getting ready so that you can get your body used to it. And do practice times at the same time that you will be writing on the actual test date. This will help to make sure that your timing is correct and it will help you get your body and mind into the proper scheduling so that you can have an optimal performance on test date. One thing that you might want to look into is figure out what helps you to get to sleep. Uh, often people will listen to relaxing music and I've heard that meditation also helps to get to bed because the night before the exam you have to take into consideration the fact that you are likely to be anxious and that anxiety will will make it more difficult to fall asleep so finding ways to reduce that anxiety will help you to get a good night's rest because the last thing you want to do is be sleep deprived the day of the exam so this is just the first video on what kind of things you need to consider and start preparing for uh, as you near your test date. I will have a second video with more tips coming shortly. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll do my best to respond. And any requests and ideas for future videos are also welcome, and just leave them in the comments below. Until next time, keep on practicing. This is MCAT Strategy, logging off.